Hello, this is Thomas Joseph and coming to you with today's word where we share things directly from the Bible. But not only just things from the Bible, but things that the Lord is uh, trying to reveal for this time, for this day, things that are relevant for right now. And today we are continuing even from last week where uh, we've been looking at how God gives us unctions by the Spirit inside of us. And those unctions bring influence. The unction is the anointing of the Spirit of God in, that He puts inside of us. 1 John 2 says, But the anointing which you have received of Him, and that word anointing means unction. So you could say it like this. You could say, The unction that you've received of Him abides in you. So that anointing, uh, we have to realize is inside. God leads us by his spirit inside of us and he moves us. And today we're going to continue on and, and to look more how God works. Uh, this is very interesting. I was praying about what to share and the Lord just brought my attention. He let me know you're not finished yet with, with what we've been talking about. If you have your Bible or you can look on the screen because we always have the scripture up there for you go to Ephesians 4 and 7 and it says but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ unto every one of us is given grace that's every one of us receives influence you know this word grace I know, I know often we hear that that word means unmerited favor, which is a part of it. But the word grace, when you really look in the scripture um, and the definition of it, uh, it speaks also of divine influence upon our hearts. It's a divine influence. It's like, let's say, a father who's influencing his little son, training his little son, teaching his, his little son to do things you know in life and that's what also grace is it's god's divine influence that's affecting us so unto every one of us is given grace and it's according to the measure the limited portion of the gift of christ so we're talking about individual uh portions of divine influence that God gives each one of us. And that that divine influence comes upon our lives. Some people are influenced to do one thing. Some are influenced to do other things. Some are influenced to be great in, in different things in the earth, you know, to make a lot of money to support missions or to be real strong in business, you know, and hospitality and different things like that. And then others are anointed to be in the ministry and to preach the gospel of Jesus. And some have multiple gifts and multiple callings. And uh, this is what we're looking at today. So he says, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Remember, Christ means the anointed one. So we're talking about the gift of Christ, the gift, the portion of the anointing of Jesus that is given to us. Each one of us have a measure available to us. Each one of us have a, have a limited degree of this anointing that's available to us. Now, it's interesting. He says, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity and gave gifts unto men. So when he went on high after Jesus went into hell, took our sins, suffered for our sins, he ascended up, he went on high, and then he released gifts unto men. And we know Jesus said when he was about to go, he said, wait till you be endued with power from on high. He said, you're going to receive the power of the Holy Ghost very soon. He said, then you'll be my witnesses. So he's talking about the the gifts that come through the Holy Spirit, the anointings, the divine uh, uh, miraculous abilities 
and the faculties. It even means miraculous faculties. So each one of us is given miraculous and divine ability from God to do what he wants us to do. And then it says here in verse, let's go to verse um, 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So these are some of the gifts that he gave. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors. Now, these, of course, are offices, you know, that people fulfill. And God chooses people to go into different offices. If God wants you to be a pastor, you can't be an evangelist. Well, you could do that. But unless God anoints you to do these things, you won't be fulfilling his true will and you won't be operating under his ability. See, these are offices, but these are also anointings. He gave these gifts. Each one of us is given a measure of his grace or his divine influence upon our heart and how it's reflected in our lives. So this grace comes upon us. Some people are made to be apostles, some people prophets, some people evangelists, you see. So these are anointings, but these anointings enable the person to fulfill an office and a calling. So you can't be one of these things in God's eyes unless God specifically anoints you and brings you and equips you for that position. That's why Paul always said, Paul, an apostle, not of man, nor by man, but by Jesus Christ. Uh, he said, Where, whereof I was made a minister by the effectual working of his power in me. In fact, that's a good scripture if I could find it real fast. Let me see. I think it's in Ephesians 3. And... He says in verse 7, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. See, the Holy Spirit just brought this scripture in. Isn't this an awesome thing? According to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. See, Paul said I was made a minister. I didn't just think about it in my mind. Um, I didn't just do it because someone else was saying, hey, you know, you would make a good minister. You know, you could probably really be a good teacher, good, a good pastor, whatever. No, he said, I was made a minister. I became a minister. How? By the gift of the grace of God. There's, there's a releasing of grace upon someone's life. And it's supernatural. It, it's that unction, that anointing that comes inside of us, given by the effectual working of his power. So this is something when God anoints someone to do something, I mean, it's working in them. It's, it's alive inside of their spirits, what God has called someone to do. And like I say, some people are called specifically for the ministry. Now, if you're not called specifically to fulfill an office, this is still a, still a, a good word for you because this will help you recognize people who are called by God and people who are not. If you could see how the Holy Spirit works in people and if it, and you could discern the Holy Spirit working through them and you could see the gift of God upon their life, uh, then you can, you can more assuredly stay into truth and, and that helps you stay from being deceived by false imposters, you know, because the Holy Spirit works. And we're going to look a little bit into this today and tomorrow, um, for sure. I know how when the Holy Spirit is working in someone's life, the Holy Spirit is working to bring attention to Jesus. 
The Holy Spirit is glorifying Jesus. Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, well, he said, I have many things to say unto you. He said, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He, he ended up saying, he will glorify me. In other words, he was saying, he's going to talk about what I want you to know. He's going to bring your attention to me. So when when the Holy Spirit is working through someone, they're bringing you to the attention of things Jesus said, the things Jesus teaches, the ways of Jesus Christ, and to Jesus himself personally. So he says here uh, that he was made a minister, and it was by the effectual working of his power. Wow. You know, God's power is awesome. That means Paul didn't say I was made a minister because I went for six years of seminary training. He didn't say I was made a minister because the chief um, apostle or the chief bishop uh, told me that I could become a certain minister. He said, no, it was an effectual working of God's power. See, sometimes those that appear to be ministers aren't really uh, fulfilling the calling of God in their life as God sees it. But those that God anoints, those that receive the gift of the grace of God. I was trying not to say this, but I, but the Holy Spirit keeps uh, bringing this up. You see, each one of these offices it requires the effectual working of God's power in them, working. Like, you can't become a minister because two or three ministers or two or three people that have titles agree and say, yeah, I think we think you could become this or that. No, there's got to be an effectual working of power. Now, that's not to say that other ministers can't recognize the calling in you because that's how it works also. But, but we're talking about the true anointing. And there has been a, a movement going around, you know, and it's... Um, it's really something, and it's not good, where people approach pastors that have been in the ministry for a long time, and they got this idea somehow that if you've been a pastor for 30 years, now you should move into the apostleship. But that's not how it works. You could be a pastor, and God can anoint you to be a pastor, and it might not be in God's destiny for that person to become an apostle because the anointing of an apostle is different than the anointing of a pastor. You know, I've said this before. I went through like 30 years of my life in the ministry, not really even perceiving what was the role of an apostle. I knew they were the chief in rank, you know, according to the Bible, they were like in the first place. Um, but I never knew what the apostle meant, you know, what that ministry did. I would be trying to find out in the Bible. I'm like, well, the Bible doesn't say too much. I know they were sent, you know. I'm like, but evangelists are sent too, you know. But um, I was receiving prophecies that I would become an apostle. And I didn't think too much of it because I wasn't even sure what an apostle did. But I remember the day when Jesus anointed me to become an apostle. Man, that anointing was teaching me now what the apostle was. And I could actually see and discern and feel and know what being an, being an apostle was. I, I, I was able to relate to the apostle Paul and his teachings and the other apostles. I'm like, now I see. It's an anointing, you see. So I, I had received many prophecies, but the anointing didn't work on me yet. But there was a certain day and a time when God released it upon me. And then I was able to know, I was able to operate in that ministry. So each one has uh, um, uh, anointings and gifts that equip us to do the certain things that God wants us to do. So if you look back in Ephesians 4, I know we're wrapping it up for today. And so we'll close with these words, how... He gave some apostles and prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. So each one has specific anointings that God releases to work in them. These are gifts of grace that work in each person to fulfill that calling. I have a son, uh, Andrew, 
it was prophesied to him that he would be a teacher. You know, someone in the church service just called him out. And this is after he had been praying. He just told me this last week. So I know he said he had been praying, like asking God, what do you want me to do? And he said, I feel like you're calling me to teach, you know? And so he brought it to the Lord. And like a, a couple days later, he was at a church service and there was a, there was an apostle there. And he was like the only one he prophesied to. And he said, young man, he said, God is, God is letting me know. He's calling you to teach the Bible, you know, to teach the word, you see. And it was confirmed in him. And, and that anointing works in him. And uh, you could obtain uh, some of his teachings through following some of the links below uh, in the YouTube channel. So um, every one of us should pray and ask God what is the anointing that he has for them what is the grace what is the gift of the grace that is for their life and operate in that gift now we're going to continue with this tomorrow but for right now amen we i appreciate you so much for joining in and i pray that you are blessed uh through these daily teachings now i say it's monday through friday but you may i may have some days where i'm not able to get a teaching in there but maybe some week it will be each day, some, it might be three or four in that week, you see, but it'll be coming through Monday to Friday. But I have to go as the Lord um, enables me and as I'm available as well. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, don't forget now, as you're watching these YouTube videos, the way YouTube works, they will increase the viewership like they'll let more people see the video as an option the more people subscribe uh, below in the link the more people make a comment in there you know some people don't know but in the under the youtube video you can leave a comment there's a place where it says comment and of course liking comment and then sharing with other people it doesn't cost you anything but that's a way to promote the youtube videos and then more people will hear, more people will see. And in, in that small way, you're becoming a partner in this uh, teaching and, um, you know, in the ministry that God has given. So God bless you and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Oh, to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, to speak the name of Jesus.